Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right. We're going to have to tell the people. We're trying to use mics. Yes. Hopefully this is working. Hopefully, Hopefully you can you hear us. Can hear. Let us know as we continue to go on. Or we will ditch them halfway through. If, if you <laughs> cannot hear us, please just let us know. Okay. What are we talking about today? The upper back and the importance of everything honestly with the upper back especially lifting we're going to talk a little bit about that today as well as us creating mobility in the upper back which is one of the things that a lot of people seem to lack yep and so the, the importance of having mobility and strength in the upper back on what lifts okay so if you don't have a stable and strong upper back your deadlifting position is going to be faulty right you're going to have trouble maintaining that stabilized spine as you then hinge forward you're going to have a hard time pressing overhead if yeah. you don't have good uh, thoracic mobility and then control at end range so you're going to get all the way up there and you'll be like ah, i don't want to hold it here right and then pulling strength right if you yes. don't have good thoracic mobility and good extension throughout there, you should not be dangling from a bar. Let me just say that right now. You should not be doing pull-ups if you cannot safely reach your arms overhead. I've said that a million times. Please take it to heart. Okay, so we're gonna talk about range of motion, stability, and strength. Let's start with range of motion. How do we get range of motion in our thoracic spine? What can we All do? Right, so we're gonna start off with spinal rotation. So we're gonna have you hips at 90, knees at 90. You can have something under your head if you want. And we're just going to open up, working on rotating and getting rotation through that upper back. Yep, we talked about this last week too with yeah. the lower back. It's all connected, yeah. people, right? Lower back to the upper back to the neck, hip bone, the knee bone. It's all connected. So the better you get at that rotating um, with the spinal rotation, the better you're going to get all it, the whole spine is going to feel better. Adding this, mm, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Yes. Right. This also this starts to tell you if you're doing it correctly too. You might feel these lumps of like weakness throughout the range. Right. That means that you're just lacking strength throughout that range. Right. And sometimes you don't feel that unless you add a resistance to it. So obviously, I love the Power Wheels. Big fan. Yes. But you can do this with these any awesome. band as well. Right. So you can just use one of those long loop bands. Um, another thing we can do for range of motion. It's thoracic extension, right? So I like to use a medicine ball, a foam roller, whatever it is. There's just, you have to make sure that you are doing thoracic extension and not, not. just arching at the lower back, right? So a lot of times people that lack thoracic mobility make up for it in lumbar extension, right? So you overextend at the lower back and this works for, you know, people will do it for supermans, for stretching, for trying to get that barbell overhead. If you don't have the proper range throughout the thoracic spine, you will make up for it somewhere else. So when we're doing thoracic extension, I'm going to turn this a little bit right. so that we can see without me putting my butt in their face. There we go. Good. <laughs> All right, so when doing thoracic extension, you want to make sure that the foam roller is at the thoracic spine. So I like to say right between your shoulder blades. Knees bent so that you're already releasing your lower back from carrying too much load. Hands behind your head if you can. If not, you can cross your arms here in order to make it a little bit easier. And then we're going to try to pin our ribs, meaning they're not overexposed. You can't get your fingers under them. They're pushed down. And then from here, you just lift at the chest. Okay, so just arching and then pulling back in. You can go hands behind your head to create a little bit more weight and then pull back in, right? I like to do this dynamically. I don't think you need to really hang out there for long periods of times, especially when you're just starting to access this range. And you can slide up and down a little bit and work through like two or three inches worth of your thoracic spine. You can also use yeah. a medicine ball. I want to add something in there. Some of you, especially CrossFitters, may have seen this exercise with like a kettlebell or weight behind, which is really great, but we need to see if we can have that range of motion actively before we add on weight. Because if we're arching our low back and then we add on weight, we're just compressing our low back even more. So yep. try it without weight first and see how the thoracic spine feels up and down. Yeah, and I've even seen partner drills done in gyms where people will hold a PVC pipe and then their partner just pulls that PVC pipe back or they're putting their knee into their shoulder blades and pulling that PVC pipe back. You have to make sure that you have at least the bare minimum of, of uh, mobility and flexibility before then increasing and adding load. I've seen it done with a barbell overhead. Oh. You got to make sure that you take the proper progressions. Don't just do what you saw on YouTube or on Instagram. Right. You got to make sure that it is specific for you and that you check all the boxes before for going and diving deep into that. Right, right. Next up, talk about stability. 
Stability is a little important. Yeah. It's a lot, <laughs> a lot important. Something that I notice a lot is we tend to have overactive traps where our top of our shoulders tend to be so tense and we're not doing anything to stabilize our mid trap or our lower trap, which helps us get in all those positions to hold up our low back so we're not arching in that forward posture. So stability is gonna be super important with the overhead lifting. Most of the time we end up having shoulder issues because our back muscles cannot hold something overhead. Or the wrong muscles, right? Like so We're the, using the wrong muscles. Our traps are strong as shit, right? That's why you can do a gazillion pounds on shrugs, right? But it doesn't mean they need to be coming to the party at all times, right? They're greedy, they're ball hogs, they will they will take it at any point. But you got you got a few traps, right? There's upper, middle, and lower. We want those other ones working. We want the other stabilizing muscles right. to come and take over a lot of the duty of the traps. That way the traps can just chill the hell out. Right. So what do we right. do? Alright, so first thing we're gonna do are teas. So we can lay face down. I like to have my thumbs facing up just to help engage that middle back. Make sure that we're pulling tension through our entire body. I'm engaging my core through all of this. Oops. And then we're going to be lifting up and thinking about bringing those two shoulder blades together. Lifting up to the top and pausing for a couple of seconds. So we're looking for not anything activating up here, right? We want this to chill out. Pull your shoulders away from your ears and then pull this way, right? So think of your thumbs coming straight back and trying to touch together behind your back. Obviously, they're not going to do it, but that's the direction that you're pulling in. And yes, like she said, let's make sure that the rest of you is not making up for this, right? If you're lifting up your chest in order to get those hands up and you're arching your lower back, then you're not really performing the task that's required, right? Or that right. is indicated. You're just making up for it and you're creating range of motion where you do not have range of motion. So it's really important to shove those hips down, like she said, yes. for sure. Yes. All right, and the next okay. one. Oh, snow angels? Snow angels. I love oh, me some prone <laughs> snow angels. Okay, so we do these a lot. There's prone snow angels, prone kettlebell walkovers. Again, these are all over my YouTube channel. But the goal here being that you are trying to pull your hands away from the floor and then take them through a range, therefore activating all that back, back musculature. So again, we're actively shoving our hips down into the floor, lift up the upper half, and then we take the hands up and through a range of motion. As we get up overhead, this is really challenging. So if you need to just reach and come back in order to stay controlled, please do so. If you need to do one hand at a time in order to really connect and make it a lot easier, please do so. You wanna make sure that you regress and exercise to the point where you can actually accomplish the task at hand. If you're swimming and you're going like this in order to get through your set of eight, that's not the attended stimulus. So we need to shorten the lever arm, do one um, arm instead of bilateral in order to make it more accessible and a little bit easier so you can actually work the muscles that we're trying to work. Yes, yes. Next up, one of my favorite things to do are lift offs. I like starting off with one arm, but we're gonna be kind of in like a child's pose position, sitting back as much as we can. Our goal is to be able to roll that shoulder forward and lift up off the foam roller. In order to do that, we're engaging these muscles in our upper back. So we can start with one arm, being able to roll up, and then lift, then back down. Throughout this entire moment, I'm still engaging my core. I feel everything in my back and that upper back, and that's the muscles that I need to lift off that roller. These are great. Scapular reaches, these like, and if facing the floor yes, the is too challenging, then you stand up and you face the wall, right? Yes. Again, if you're doing these and it looks like crap, your shoulders all appear, you can barely get your arm up. It's not a range that you possess yet. So let's bring it down, reach out, ask somebody be like, does this look right? We'll either say, hell yeah, go for it. Or like, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you're going to regress a little there's bit. There's always something right. else that can be done. Modified scapular reach, that's on my YouTube. I think that one is hugely yes. important because if you don't pull the shoulder blade down as you're then reaching up, then we're getting that trap involved and we're not, once you lift up, we're not using the right muscles in order to actually build that strength in the upper back. You're just using different stuff, which is not the desired thing. Right. I love that movement. I gave it to a client yesterday. She's a butterfly swimmer and her traps were, oh man. 
you couldn't dig into those things. Yeah. But it was because they were overactive and she wasn't recruiting the proper muscles. So we gave, I gave her that modified reach and it was so, she's like, man, this is hard because you're not so using the correct muscles. Yeah. Some, sometimes you can't even lift off. You're just yeah. like, all right, we just let's just on the wall. work on this range, right? And that's when it beca- that's when it becomes with intent and moving with intention, right? You have to really slow down, think about what you're trying to accomplish, right? When we're doing these scapular reaches, or when we're doing these prone snow angels or swimmers, whatever you want to call them, the T's, we're trying to pull the shoulder blade down, lift the chest, and use the musculature in the upper back, not in the neck right? We're not trying to get here. We're not trying to use the upper traps right. ever. <laughs> Literally ever in life. They, they do enough. You don't have to strengthen them. Um, we're trying to use the right muscles. So if you slow down and actually think about what you need to use, then you will accomplish it, right? You can't go too quick on these things and you right. can't progress too quickly. Just start take slow. It. Start slow. All right. body. Yep. And if you cannot do these things, like if you have a hard time going through that snow angel position, I guarantee you when you're taking that barbell and you're doing your heavy jerks or when you're doing your kipping pull-ups, you yeah. are causing damage, structural damage. Your musculature is there to hold you together. If you do not have the proper musculature or it's not working appropriately, other shit is going to come to the party. Your ligaments, your joint capsule, your cartilage. All that's the, the shit you don't want to hurt, right? <laughs> like that's right. the stuff that requires surgical intervention. So we want the musculature to take that load and to take the brunt of that work. If you don't do that, something bad is going to happen. And not tomorrow, not in three months, but in six months, a year, when you feel like you're a rock star and you're throwing up every weight and you're doing 80 pull-ups, you're going to do Murph for Memorial Day, that's when shit falls apart. And so we're trying to get you to be proactive about it. Whether you're in pain or not, be proactive about these things. Test yourself. Do the things, right? Sorry. Yeah. No. (laughs) No. All the things. Took you to church. All right. (laughs) So strength. Yes. Strength, strength, strength. We already did a little bit of it. That's yeah. mobility. That's end range control. So how do we just strengthen that shit? What do we need to do? We're going to add on. We're going to add on these. Oh. <laughs> so I like this because you can also, we can be supine. We can be on our back. We can be in a half kneeling position to kind of mimic our gait in a single leg stance. So we can always progress it by doing the same movement, just how about what we're doing with the rest of our body. All right. So in this case, I'll just stand. Okay. I'll just stand. So we're going to come across. One thing I like to do, or now that Ty has taught me how to do, <laughs> is to grip our feet into the floor oh, and create the tension throughout our entire body, keeping our ribs down, like you said, which I'm totally going to use, that your fingers can't fit underneath your ribs. Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> Bringing those shoulders down, those traps down out of your ears, and being able to open up. And make sure we're breathing throughout that entire motion. We should be able to breathe from our diaphragm, so from our stomach, without lifting our shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, how can you make every single move a full body exercise? The more you can start taking that home and bringing that into your movement practice, the better off you're going to be because that means you're not leaking energy anywhere. You're not having accessory movement anywhere, right? Like you're just focusing on the task at hand once you lock everything into position. But puller parts are probably in... 60% 60% of each one of my warm-ups that I teach. They need to be. They need to be. They're so, <laughs> they're so important. And you can couple it with a split squat. You can rotate open. All my golfers or single-sided athletes, oh, yes. if you hinge and then do a pull-apart, I mean, especially to the opposite side, you're going to find so much imbalance and then realize, holy crap, I should probably be working this. But yeah, the pull apart is one of those that can be done very poorly. But if you do the proper steps with the range of motion and the stability, then once you get to the point of doing your pull aparts, you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm actually using the right muscles. If you're coming here, it's not right. But if you had done the stability work, you should have realized that that way you can lock in it when it's time to actually strengthen. Um, exactly. Pull apart, it's big fan. And like she, like she did a diagonal, that's introducing a whole other creature. One arm's gonna wanna go, one shoulder is gonna wanna lift up. You gotta be really mindful of that. Mindful Lo- movement. Love it me some pull apart. Yes. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> All the things. Big fan. So you mentioned pull ups earlier. I think we need to demonstrate the scat pull yep. up or at least a hold for yep. people to know how to. Ty's going to demonstrate that. <laughs> See her awesome back muscles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, scapular pull-ups, right? Off, off, often, 
done poorly but hugely important to build shoulder strength in order to do pull-ups especially kipping pull-ups if you do not have the ability to control your scapula or to even hang from the bar without just falling into this loose dead hang position you got no business doing kipping okay all right so we're going to make sure that we have a full grip on the bar i hate suicide grip it's just not good for you we're going to wrap that thumb around you that's a whole other can of worms that we can open up. Just don't do it. Suicide grip is called suicide grip for a reason. All right, so we're going to wrap that thumb. We're going to make sure that the rest of our body is nice and tight. We're not just hanging loose like this. Again, can you make every exercise a full body exercise? The tighter you are from the ribs down, the lighter you're going to appear to your hands and your arms, right? So it's just cheating. So tighten up so that you can cheat and make it easier. Okay, so nice and tight here. I want you to think of lifting your chest up towards the ceiling and pulling your shoulder blades down into your ribs or your back pockets, right? And then you come back down. Oftentimes what you see is people will tug on the bar or they'll pull themselves through, right? So we don't want an elbow bend and we don't want to pull yourself forward. We want to just lift the chest and pull the shoulders down and in. Go ahead and do it this way, right? Yep. Pull and right then down. This is great, especially after you do this, do some stability work because we're engaging similar muscles, bringing those scapulas down and in. You can also do this in a row position if dangling from a bar is not accessible to you. You can do it in a row, you get under the bar and just pull the shoulder blades back and down, right? Same type of thing, trying to get the shoulders away from your ears and get some scapular movement and some range in that thoracic spine. Really important. Yes, yes. Another one that I really, really, really like, especially when we're talking about strengthening the upper back for deadlifting or hinging specifically, I see it all the time with either kettlebell swings or obviously oh. deadlifts, right? We're losing that upper back tension. One thing I like to dose out, is the snatch grip deadlift. Okay, so we're gonna go out wide on this and this can be done with something really light. You can use a PVC pipe, it doesn't matter. The goal is that the wide position strengthens your grip, which is hugely important, but it also, when you start hinging forward, you really feel this a lot more in this wider grip than you do when you have a narrower grip. So we're trying to keep that chest pulled out and staying within a range that you can keep that barbell really pulled into you. Like I said, you can do this with a PVC pipe, something light, but that wider grip allows you to just kind of feel it more. Back, yeah. It's a lot more challenging. So I tend to dose this in, whether you're gonna do snatches or not, you don't gotta do engage a snatch. Engage those muscles. But just engage those muscles and use it as a tool to strengthen your upper back. Yes, I think that's great. I see so many kettlebell swings that I'm like, we are not doing these correctly right. at all. We're not engaging the right muscles. So yeah. I think that's great. And even before going to that, I forgot we were going to talk about seated good mornings. Oh, we really did. Important. We did. Darn it, man. All right, seated good mornings. That is one of the first introductions to hinging that I like to use because you can take the lower half out of it and you can kind of relieve pressure on the lower back. You can start to introduce it in a way that is this safe, right? Like a lot of times people will be like, I don't know if I can bend over and pick that thing up. Start with the seated good morning. And this specifically addresses the upper back, right? So yes. you can start with, um, I'm just gonna do it here, but your feet okay. need to be firmly planted. <laughs> Let's just say that. Your feet need to be on the floor, right? The first position would be here. I actually have a post coming up about this, just edited it this morning. But um, you just lean forward, making sure that you don't get- We're not rounding out. Anything here. Right? We want to make sure that your chest is out. So you would just go forward to back here, progressing it to prisoner position, and then progressing to maybe holding a goblet and then to the barbell. But if you can't do that safely and with, you know, a little bit of load, then you got no business pulling right. from the ground. Like just don't do it. Make sure that you take those steps first, right? Yes, yes. Okay, double chin, scapular control, too no, much upper No, I wanted to add, yeah, I just want to add in about the double chin. So one of the biggest things that we notice is that with the muscles in our mid-back and the muscles that run up to our neck, they're meant to be spinal erectors and hold us up. And if they're doing so much work because we have all this forward head carriage, then it makes it harder to engage those muscles. So while you're going through all of these upper back movements, be sure that you're keeping that double chin and that head back. 
because you engage more muscles, you're be fully in, aware of the mobility in your upper back because if this is out here, we can't do a lot. So make sure we're tucking everything in and you'll be able to engage those muscles a lot more. Yep. And this goes to, you know, like maybe you're not trying to PR your jerk or you're not trying to do heavy deadlifts, but you're sitting at your desk all day long, right? So this is where muscular strength and endurance really comes to play. Like your muscles need to have the ability right. to sit up tall. We could remind you all day long, hey, fix your posture, fix your posture. But if your muscles are weak and they're lengthened because they've just been sitting like this all day long, then you actually have to go in and, and strengthen them, right? right? You have to do the things. And sometimes it's not about gaining range of motion. It's about just developing strength in the muscles, right? And connecting right. with them so that they actually do their job for an extended period of time. Exactly. It's, it's asking a lot of your musculature to hold up your big old dome and sit there for a long time, right? So, right. so, <laughs> so give them a little leg up by doing what you need to Sweeping do in order to strengthen. Them. And it doesn't take a lot. We're not talking about large muscles, so you don't need to be doing five by fives and doing all these, you know, six week strength cycles. You can just address them two to three minutes a day and go about your business. Right. It, we really don't need much work, but you need consistent Consistency work. Consistency is the key. It has to happen all the time. Like I said, I dose this into a lot of my warm ups, a lot, because it's just, it's a faulty movement pattern. We will default to other positions. And if we don't constantly address that, yes. it's, you're just constantly going to sit in bad positions, walk in bad positions, lift more in injuries. bad positions. <laughs> right. Let's not do that. Right. It makes so, it harder to hit those PRs when we're injured. So. It's hard. Yes, exactly. Right. There's so many people that are like, I don't understand why I can't jerk properly. And I'm like, well, have you tested your shoulder range of motion? Do you have the thoracic spine mobility in order to get that bar safely overhead? Can you hang out there? If not, we're not ready. You're not doing it right. Yes. You're never going to be able to perfect the technique of the lift if you don't have the range to actually get into the positions that you need to get in. And that goes with snatching, overhead squats, pull-ups, all the things. All the things. Squats, all, all the, the things, things, right? So test yourself. Do you have the range needed in order to get to the position that you are trying to get into? If not, then that's what you need to do first. Don't start trying to, don't keep trying to put a square peg in a round hole. Right. It doesn't work. Exactly. Exactly. What are we talking about next week? I think we're going to talk about the shoulder, which right. is basically yes. yeah. pretty much the same thing. But we can yeah. talk about a lot more exercises for the shoulder. Okay. There's, yeah. There's only a few. Because I know um, a lot of us <laughs> need some overhead mobility type stuff. Or just stability in our <laughs> shoulders in general. Yeah. Stability first. Yes. For sure. We ask a lot of our body before actually giving it the proper stabilizing muscles to keep it all together. Like I said, our muscles are the glue that holds us together. We don't want to depend on the inert structures. The, the the ligaments, the cartilage, the joint capsule. We want right. to depend on the muscles. The muscles. <laughs> All right. The They're muscles. important. Use those muscles. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining yes. us. We will be back next week with the shoulder. Again, follow us at Resilient Spine Anti Training and tell all your friends this is important stuff here. We're trying to get the message out. Yes. All right. See you all See next, you next week. time.